Okay, we'll get a little closer here. I got it right. I wasn't referring to anybody. Okay, so how's everybody doing? All right, we're going to try something new tonight. Here, well, it's not new. We did do it before. So as you can see, what we were talking about in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of what he does. All right, so how's everybody doing? Good, good. Awesome, awesome. Um, we are starting in a new chapter in Romans. Of course, we'll have our review first. Um, so anyway, let's pray. So Father, we thank you so much. Thank you for our time here in the Word. We thank you for grace, that we're justified by grace. We thank you for the example of Abraham that we just went through in Romans chapter 4. And uh, we just ask you just to bless our Bible study, bless our time in the Word now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so as we normally do, we review um, what we did before. We have, I guess we can call it a pre-wrap, and then we'll have a post-wrap. So, <clears throat> what, what did we uh, discuss last time? Faith works by love. Yes, faith works by love. And, and what does that mean? Faith works by love. <laughs> faith, faith works by love. Galatians 5, 6, yeah, inner gale. It means it, it operates through love, right? It operates through love. And without love, we, we can't operate in faith. Doesn't seem like it's possible to. You know, because we know that, that God loves us and He will fulfill His promises. And that's where, so we, we, we understand it. that was a problem with the nation of Israel, right? So that they didn't believe that God loved them. And that's why they didn't go into the promised land. That's why they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Because they didn't believe that what God had said. That he, that he, would, he would bring them to the promised land. So, <clears throat> so that's good. So let's, uh, let's see what we got here. Um, <clears throat> we talked about Romans chapter 4. And... Um, we said, let's see here. Abraham gave glory to God. Abraham gave glory to God. And it says, let's, let's back up here, Romans 4.20. It says, He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. Let's actually let's go back a little bit further to 19. It says, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. And what do we say about weak in faith? Um, and he considered not his own body now dead. And what do we say about verse 19 and verse 20? Who remembers? He was fully persuaded and convinced. Yeah. Well, we said it in verse 19, it was in the active voice. And in verse 20, it was in the passive voice. It says, He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. It says he was not weak in faith in verse 19. That was active voice, but was strong in faith. That was in the passive voice, which means that Abraham chose not to look at the circumstances. Like his body could not produce children. His wife's body could not produce children. He looked at that. Instead, he focused on the promises of God. And he believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. As a, as a, so, the, so faith in this sense is something that happened to him because of what he focused on. So what does the Bible say? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God in Romans 10, 17. So it comes from that. We, we hear it and then it's something we choose to hear it and then God does the work to produce faith in us. Faith comes by hearing. And like, like you said before, that it works by love, inner geo. It operates through love. It's awesome. Um, and so, and then it says, and it says, verse 21, it says, giving glory to God, giving glory to God. And what do we say about that? Reflected glory. Yeah. Yeah. Reflected the glory of God. In other words, what man was designed to be created in the image and the likeness of God to reflect the glory of God. And because Abraham believed, then is shown forth that's 
that 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 he gave he gave the um, uh, 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 the glory to God. In other words, he 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 reflected God's glory. Does this make sense? So yeah, and so and then it says uh, in verse twenty one, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Fully persuaded, kind of like what you know we use the example of. Um, um, uh, we use the example of, um, of, of, of Elizabeth, who was pregnant with John the Baptist, and she was, she was in her old age as well. And then also Mary, who had never been with a man, and yet she became pregnant, which was even a greater miracle. And it says there's a, that, that nothing shall be impossible with God in Luke one thirty seven. Um, and then it says, And therefore it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And in verse 23, and it, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. Hmm. Wow. That's interesting, isn't it? Where was it written at? Genesis 15, 6. Abraham believed God and it was, it was, it was accounted unto him for righteousness. And so it was written there. He's referring back to this verse here in the Bible. So it was not written so that Abraham only could be justified. But then it says in verse 24, But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed. And who remembers what we said about it shall be? I hear crickets. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it has the word, the word, okay. those who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. Right. Well, it says it shall be, it's not, yeah, something about the tense, it's not future tense, is it? It's not, future tense. It is, it's a present tense and the word is mellow, mellow, you know. Call it mellow yellow, right? It was like, <laughs> so in other words, like, like it means that God is about to impute righteousness. Like God is going to put the hammer down. As soon as someone is, is, d receives Christ as their Savior, he, God puts the hammer down and says righteous. Immediately. Immediately it is imputed unto them. It says, so it means that it says, it shall be imputed. And it says, if we believe on him. But that word there, if we, it's actually to those who believe on him. Is that what your translation says? Yeah, yep, that, that's, that's a better translation. To those who believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Hmm. That was the greatest miracle of all, wasn't it? That Jesus was raised up from the dead. That's the foundation of what we believe of Christianity. That we believe that Jesus was risen from the dead. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, the disciples didn't believe that, did they? To begin with, even though Jesus talked about it all the time, about the, that he was going to be crucified and that he was going to be risen from the dead. Even though there's verses, like in Psalm 22, that says that they pierced my hands and my feet, they parted my garments among them. I mean, specific prophecies about his crucifixion, like in the Bible. But yet, it, it, like it, it never, like it, for some reason, they, they thought that Jesus was going to come and establish his kingdom, apparently. Not that he was going to be crucified on the cross. That was a failure because, because he was cursed of God. And it says here in verse 25, it says, who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. And what, and what did we say about that one? Delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. Our, our account has been credited? Um, yeah. Yeah. Justified. Right, because right. It was a sign that God was, um, was perfect. Yes, he accepted Christ. But then, but then, but he was also cursed of God. Yeah, he was cursed of God in the A part of that verse. But in the B part, he was accepted of God. That was the proof that he was accepted of God when he was, when God raised him from the dead. You know, so in other words, like he was delivered for our offenses. In other words, that, 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 and then it says he was raised again for our justification. In Galatians 3.13, it says that he became a curse for us, that he was cursed because cursed is every man who hangs on a tree. 
it says. So he became the curse for us. He became sin for us in 2 Corinthians 5.21, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And so we was raised again for our justification that it was obvious that we would be justified mm -hmm. because Jesus, in a sense, was justified by the Father. I don't know if that's correct to say that or not, but he was, but Jesus was accepted of the Father. And so, anyway, so now we go on to verse 5. Chapter. I'm sorry, chapter 5. Don't go back to verse 5. Chapter 5. <laughs> you're, going, you're going way too far back. Okay. It <laughs> says, okay, so, so it says, therefore, therefore. Now, therefore is referring back to chapter 4. Well, we just said the fact that Abraham was not justified by works. And that's in, if we sum this up here, just so that I get it straight here. Yeah, Abraham was not justified by works in chapters 1 through 8. He was not justified by ordinances, maybe like circumcision, if you want to call that an ordinance. You know, that he wasn't justified because he was circumcised. So that means that we are not justified either by water baptism or by uh, taking communion, or doing other, any of those things. So that was in verses 9 through 12. And neither was he justified by obedience to the law in the last part of that. And you know what? Neither are we justified by obedience to the law. So there was the proof. How are we justified? It says, therefore, it says, being justified by faith. Being justified. So being justified is in the passive voice. What does the passive voice mean? Action received. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, we, we, that, that it means specifically the subject of the verb receives the action, but it means that a lot of times it means we receive the action. We receive. We are. We are being justified. God is the justifier in Romans three twenty four. God is the one who justifies us. So and He justifies us, and it says by faith, and then it says we have peace with God. We have. Now this is, we're going to look up here. Unless I have to erase all this here. If I can figure out how to do it here. Do we always say by his faith, being justified by his faith? Um, um, that would not be inaccurate to say that. Um, but because faith comes by, from God, but it also comes by choice, though. In other words, we choose, we choose to believe. So, because there's a false teaching out there that says that that we can't that we have we can't make choices, that His grace is irresistible, and that all those who are going to be saved they are they will come to God by His grace. You know, five point Calvinism says that. That's the biggest fallacy with it. It's just saying that it takes out freedom to choose, which we really believe heavily that it is by choice we choose we we choose there is always choices in the bible adam and eve they choose to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil there was a choice there so there's always choices and people and why why does somebody go to hell because they choose not jesus they didn't choose him they 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 they, they, they rejected the gift and that was the you know, that's the only sin that's not pardonable so to say they they say no to jesus free gift and it says, so here it says, being justified by faith, it says we have. We have something. And the word here in the Greek is this. Can you read that? Mm -hmm. Echo men. I can see it. I can. Echo, e echo men. This, pa this, this part means we right here. We. In English, we could read it. You could read it, and it actually it is written in English. It's right here. We have. So, but this right here is an Omicron. This letter right here is an Omicron. And it's, this is in the indicative mood. And it's not a virus. <laughs> no, it is not a virus. You're right about that. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> this is the Omicron, and this, is the, this makes this in the indicative mood, which means it's a mood of fact. The indicative mood is a mood of fact, right? So if it was written like this, That would be subjunctive. I don't even remember what those words. One, one letter. Same word. Yeah. One letter. 
This is an Omicron. This is what? <coughs> Omega. This is, this is a long O sound, like ah. This is a short O. So you would say X omen, this would say X amen. So in other words, if this was said X, -o X amen, right here, it would be subjunctive and it would say, let us have peace with God. And it wouldn't be in the indicative, it wouldn't be. So what does the first one mean? This is indicative mood. Word. Indicative mood. This is what's in the Bible. This is what's written here. We have indicative mood, which is the mood of fact. This is a fact. This one is subjunctive. We're, you didn't know we are going to get a Greek lesson today. Huh? Right? This is uncertain. Can you read my writing there? It's okay. So... <laughs> It says, so in other words, like, we have peace with God, which means what? It says, there's the peace of God, and there's peace with God. There's peace with God. What does peace with God mean? That there is no more enmity between man and, and you and me. Because what does it say that we were by nature the children of wrath in Ephesians 2.4? To begin with, it says that the wrath of God, like uh, Romans 1.18, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. And that word hold there, the word is kateko, it means to hold down the truth in unrighteousness because of their unrighteousness. Because their unrighteousness goes against the truth of God. Like homosexuality, it goes against the truth of God because God created a man and a woman. He didn't create a man and a man to be, to be together. You know, it goes against nature, which is the wildest thing. So even nature itself testifies to the truth of God. And so this right here says, we have, this is, means it's our possession. We have. So it's not, so this, this doctrine right here is not just based upon one word, but one letter different in here. That's the point we're making here. In other words, or this is one letter. Now, that's what Jesus said that, uh, that's every jot, every tittle, like is inspired scriptures. And we believe that. So we go back into the original here. So this being in the indicative mood is the mood of fact. And the whole context here, if we look at it, is about is a whole series of facts. Here, what, what are the facts? That in, in verse 6, that Christ died for the ungodly. That's, uh, that's um, verse 8, that's while we were sinners. Christ died for us, that we were saved from wrath in verse 9, that we were the enemies of God in verse 10. See, these are the facts, so that we are, now have peace with God. What is, what is the peace of God? Then the, what, like, 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 what is peace with God, in other words, or the peace of God? Like in Philippians 4, 7, it's the peace of God, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, and the peace of God shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Like uh, uh, Isaiah 26, 3, that that will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. And then the Bible tells us in Psalm 119, verse 165, Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. So there's perfect peace, there's great peace, and then there's the peace that Jesus gives as a gift. And that's in John 14, 27. Jesus says, My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So yes, we can have peace. As a result, but first we have peace with God. We have peace with God. This is the amazing thing. We are justified. This is the results of justification. That's what chapter 5 starts getting into. The results of justification that bring out that that's, we have peace with God. The, 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 um, the first part here, the second part here, starting in verse 12, talks about the contrast between, between Adam and Christ. And that because of Christ, or because of Adam, I should say, that all people die. A physical death and a spiritual death. But because of Christ, all people can live. Like a, a, a spirit, like can live forever, physically, 
and live also, have abundant life now. The life of Christ, which is the life of Christ that he gives us, that the Holy Spirit sheds abroad in our hearts in Romans 5.5. 5. And so... Um, and so this is what it says, we, that is therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. This is our possession. This is our possession. That we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. But then it, all, but it gets better in verse 2. It says, by whom also. Oh, you mean there's more? Not only do we have peace with God, but, oh, here's another we have right here. We have, and it's, this is in the perfect tense here, which means it's your permanent possession. Your permanent possession. We have access. We have access into this grace wherein we stand. So what does this mean? That, that the access here, the word is prosagage in the Greek. It means to brain toward. It's the action of somebody bringing someone else into the, into the presence of a third party. The yeah, the word is prosagage, access. Prosagage. Let's see if I, can, if I can spell it here. I'll spell it in English. Yay. I think. And that's the word that you have up there? <laughs> that's a different one. so long. I'm not sure if this is right or not. G O G E. Gage. Um so or you can say it that way. Okay, prosagage. I'm not sure if that's right or not. I have to look at it. Yeah. Strong's number. I can't read it. So yeah. What is it? Okay, there you go. So if you want to look it up in strong. So it has it's the it, prosagage means to brain, like ego, and pros toward to bring toward so jesus brings us to the father jesus bring we have access and it's your permanent possession in other words we have access to the throne of god we have access to god whereas we didn't have access before because the the veil was there was a veil over in over the we just had it on there it was the holy of holies on there and there was a veil where the presence of god was and nobody could come into the presence of God. Matter of fact, when Moses went up on the mountain, there was fire, there was smoke, rather, and God said, no one can touch the mountain lest they die. Only Moses could come up there. So there was a, t there was a temple that was built or this, uh, this t um, temporary uh, tent. That, and it says there in the last part of Deuteronomy that God, the presence of God went into the tent there. Like, his presence was in there. And so that's where God was. And only the high priest could go in there. But now we have access to God. We have access into this grace. It is a picture of a ship that is on the ocean. And, is, and the, the ship is being carried. And there is going to the um, docking station or the, the uh, port or whatever. There, it's, it's coming into the port. It's like Jesus is the one who is carrying us and carries us to the Father. Yeah, G what's that? The veil. Yeah, the veil was rent. That's when Jesus was on the cross. The veil was rent from the top to the bottom, and now we have access to God. See, we are saved by grace, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. We are taught by grace in Titus 2, 11, and 12. Um, we, here we stand in grace, it says. It says we stand in this grace. We stand in it. In other words, you can't get out of it. We're in it. It's like we, we, we stand in grace. That's amazing, isn't it? To think about that. In other words, this is like it, it cannot be removed from us. Um, and so with that we have access to God. We can at, at, at any time we call upon him. Um, we, we can come to the Father. We can come to the Father. Um, I'm sorry, I kind of got messed up here a little bit. Um, we'll go back to it in a minute. It says, by whom also we have access by faith into this particular kind of grace, right? It says this grace, this, this, part, this grace that we're talking about, God's unmerited favor wherein we stand. And so 
And it says, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. The word hope there is elpis. In the Greek, it means confident expectation. Mm -hmm. Confident expectation. In other words, what is the glory of God? Hey, when you're going to heaven, you're, you're, they, whenever you die, you're going to heaven. There's no doubt about it. So all the things that happen on this earth, everything that happens here, guess what? You have a home in heaven. That's why Jesus said, I go and I prepare a place for you. And if it were not so, I would have told you. Just in case, you know, you had any kind of doubts or anything about it. You know, that, 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 that he goes and he, he prepares a place for us and we can rejoice in this hope, this confident expectation, knowing this because Jesus was risen from the dead, we will also be risen from the dead. That's an amazing fact. And we were, and so going back here, because I forgot, I forgot something here. I'm still learning how to use this here, so. Let's see here. I'm sure there's a button that just erases the whole thing, but. Is it called delete? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm afraid to touch anything because it might go haywire. So, I don't know. You probably have seen this before, right? No, Jesus. No. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, that was loud. Okay. <laughs> Peace. So you probably seen it on a bumper sticker or something, right? At one time. Yeah, right? <laughs> it was somewhere. Where? So if there's no Jesus, then there's no peace with God for that person. But if you know him, then you know peace. Peace in the heart. There's the peace of God. The, 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 there's peace with God and there's peace of God. This is peace with God. And this is important for us to understand that like Abraham, what he was called the friend of God in James 2.23. And being a friend of God, if we are his friend, I think I want, to, it kind of leads me into wanting to do friendly things, doesn't it? Like I don't, I don't want to be hostile toward God because God calls me his friend. I think it's also in Isaiah 41, verse 8, that God called Abraham his friend. And it's like, and that's where James 2.23 is quoting from, I believe. It's like, that, 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 and we are also called his friends. Jesus even said it, you are my friends. Because I tell you all the things. And because we're able to know, obviously, God gives us grace. And we're able to come in and receive this grace constantly. From God, we come boldly to the throne of grace to find help in time of need. In Hebrews four eighteen, we 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 come boldly. The word is uh, uh, parisia. It means boldly, like because not with your head down. You know, there is this um, Catholic uh, church or somewhere. I think it's it's in. I'm not sure where it's at. I think it's in Italy or something. And you have to climb up on your knees on steps. Like all the way up. There was like, they counted how many steps it was. I think it was like 27 steps or something like that. Because you're not worthy. Because, so they think, that you're not worthy. But God has made us worthy. I mean, let's turn, because we're talking about that we have access to God. Because, we, because just to finish up here, and um, let's see here. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 4. Because we can come to the throne of God. We can come to God. Um, and this paints a picture of the worthiness that God has made us so that we could go into his presence. Um, chapter 4, verse 1, it says, and, and after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit. And behold, the throne was set in heaven, and one set on the throne. In other words, this is John, right? John, John the Apostle. And it says, And he that sat upon was, 
he the set was to look upon like as a jasper and a sardine stone and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald and round about the throne were four and twenty elder seats and upon the seats were four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment and they that had on their heads crowns of gold and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices and there was seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind and the first beast was like a lion and the second beast like a calf and the third beast like the face of a man and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle and the four beasts had each of them six wings about them and they were full of eyes within and they rest not day and night saying holy 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 lord god almighty which was and is and is to come and when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne which lives forever and ever and the four and twenty elders fall, fall down before him and eat on the throne and worship him that lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and peace for thou hast created all things for thy pleasure that they were created so here's the picture of heaven for us the throne this is where we have access to that and we are we are God considers us worthy to do that Revelation chapter 4 and God considers that um, yeah Revelation chapter 4 right there so and then so I'm sorry I'm kind of jumping all around here for some reason um, going back to Romans chapter 5 here um, talking about the peace peace of God and peace with God so there is the the peace with God and there's the peace of God right peace with God is a result of justification can you read my chicken scratch there and then so peace of God is a work of sanctification and fellowship yeah, yeah. what's that again the peace of God is work of okay so so I got it written right here so peace with God is is the result of justification and then um, peace, of peace of God is has to do with sanctification but you know there's positional sanctification as well as experiential sanctification. Like in verse 12, it starts getting into positional sanctification that we are because, because of Christ, that we are positionally sanctified. And then peace with God is, is, a, is a legal standing. And the peace of God is that the result is the work of of the Holy Spirit peace of God that that he works in our heart that the that 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 the and we're, we're about to actually start talking about this here because talking about going through trials and things which is going to get into here because because this is a work of the Holy Spirit we can have peace in the midst of peace of the peace of God in the in the in the midst of this because why because the, the the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given to us and of course faith works by love in Galatians 5 6 um, and though and also um, this right here peace with God is static you know what that means yeah it never it never changes never changes 
peace with God never changes. But the peace of God is dynamic. And it cha changes hour by hour. Doesn't it? I mean, we, we could have moments where we don't have the peace of God. I mean, a lot of times, right? <laughs> we don't really have the peace of God. It's like, I, I hear about all this message, but it's not, I'm, not, it's not, I'm not putting it into application here. Something's not right. You know, because it has to do with faith. Um, but so, so it's changing. But there are times when we do believe, isn't, isn't it? And so this or your peace with God is every Christian has this. Every Christian has. Because it's your possession. This is your possession. Hmm. And this one, the peace of God, every Christian will put may have. Has the possibility. It's a possibility to have it as well. And so... You know, like what the Bible says, Psalm 85.10, mercy and truth are met together, righteousness and peace kissed each other. So mercy and truth are met together, right, John, we we're talking about this? Mercy and truth are met together, in other words, like we hear truth, and it's the truth about God's mercy and love, and we get saved as a result of it. Mercy and truth are met together, and then righteousness and peace kiss each other. In other words, like God justifies us, He calls us righteous. He says you're justified, and then because of the result of that, we have peace with God. And there is no more hostility. There is no more, I mean, that's, that's beautiful, isn't it? It's like we are even called the friends of God. And this brings us into that now because I have peace with God, I'm able to have the peace of God. I'm able to have the peace of God that passes all understanding. So amen? So, what's that? <laughs> All right, so let's pray. So, Father, we thank you so much. We just ask you just to, we just want to give anybody a chance that if you've never accepted Jesus, that accept him today as your Savior. He loves you. He died for you. He wants to be your friend. Just accept him today. Just say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm not good enough to go to heaven but you died for me and you paid the penalty of my sins. I want to go to heaven when I die. Save me. I want to be born again. And if you've said that prayer, you were born again because you accepted the gift of eternal life. And uh, you can give me a call, 727-7. 4527445 we also have bible studies here in Clearwater Thursday night bible study where we're going through Romans and we're not in a big hurry to do it <laughs> and uh, also Sunday morning service at 1030 uh, right on, on US 19 and uh, Gulf to Bay so amen alright so questions or comments Yes, Danielle. Can we pray uh, for a little bit about Sure. But, um, of course, my mom, but I was at my aunt's last night, and she was never a drinker, but we just found out she has multiple cirrhosis areas of the liver. Okay, and this is your aunt? Okay, so Father, we just pray, God, right now for Danielle's aunt, who has multiple sclerosis, you said? Sure. Cirro I'm sorry, cirrhosis of the liver. So, Father, we just pray. Oh, dear God, we just pray for Danielle's family and uh, the health problems. Just ask you, God, just to bless, touch her, heal her, heal her liver. Bless Danielle, God. We thank you so much for her heart and her life and her faithfulness to you. Just praise you now, Lord. Pray for Tom. Pray for, for everyone here. We thank you, Father God. Just bless the rest of our time now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Questions or comments? Stephanie? So I was wondering if you could go through those verses. You kind of flew through 
The peace of God? Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Um, like Philippians 4, 7, you said peace of God, and you went through that. Yeah, there's a, it, it, it's interesting there because it says the peace of God shall keep your hearts and minds. Because of being, like it keeps your heart, like, you know, uh, you know, like, like how do you keep your heart? By focusing on those things. To cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So yeah, so Philippians chapter 4, there's the whole section right there. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Goes right along with Philippians 4, right there. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. And then in Psalm 119, Verse 165, it says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Wow. Great peace. Perfect peace. What is perfect peace? Complete peace. Just like what Jesus, like what it says in 1 John, that perfect love cast out fear. 1 John 4, 18. Perfect love means complete love there. That word perfect means complete so perfect peace. In other words, like perfect peace. It's it's perfect. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's no room for anything else. It's not peace. There is what it means. Perfect peace. What's that? Complete. Yeah, complete, complete. Um, and then John fourteen twenty seven. Uh, Jesus gives us peace as a gift. Because it says there that my, Jesus says, "My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives." Give I unto you. And he says, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So like he gives us his peace. That's the peace of God that he's talking about there. I mean, so there, I'm sure you could probably find some more. Um, you know, Isaiah 58, 9, the way of peace they have not known. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. What, which he one's that one? Peace. He is our peace. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, he is our peace. Yeah, which meaning going back to the, the peace with God. Right there, right? He is our peace. Yeah, that's that's very good. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, it's in there somewhere. You might have to hunt for it. As, as a noble-minded Berean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it says there in Ephesians chapter 2 that we were by nature the children of wrath there as well. And then he is our peace. So yeah, that's good. 14, 14 yes. Tom? Yeah. I was wondering if we could um, say a little prayer for Bobby for a happy soon move. Oh yeah, okay. And also for health to improve. Okay. Yeah, let's pray for that. I just wonder if we could do that for Chris and his wife, too. Yes. So, Father, we pray for Tom's roommate, Bobby, Lord, just for a safe move. Um, that it would work out well for her as well. We pray for Linda Sargent moving as well and her trip and all of the details and loading up the boxes and uh, getting on the train and all the... All the details. <laughs> yeah, we can pray that. But we just we just pray that God. We just pray also for Pastor Chris and Angie Lord. And is uh, God just please help Angie and touch her, her household, and just give Pastor Chris wisdom of words to say that are good words that come from you, Lord. And uh, we thank you so much. Pastor. Yes. I think it was a week ago or so that we prayed. Remember I asked for prayers for Nilda in Puerto Rico. Okay, yeah. Uh, on, well, they buried her today. Oh, okay. She, was, uh, she did pass away. But let's pray that, let's pray for the family and let's pray that hopefully they will, they will connect with the website here. We yes. Send it to them. Okay. In our Puerto Rico, right? Uh, Connecticut, Puerto Rico. Okay. And even here in Florida. Okay. 
So, Father, we just pray right now just for Felix's, um, the, the friends that he knows. It's your friends, right? They're and family. Yeah. They're and, friends, but they're like family. Okay, but it's like family, friends, yeah. Father. We just pray for all the details that they would be able to connect somehow, be in wherever they are, Lord. That we have modern technology where we're able to do that now, Father. Connect anywhere in the world. And uh, we just ask you just pray for the death that has happened and the, the, the family. God, and just uh, we just thank you so much, Lord, just for Felix and his life, Father, and his portion here. Um, thank you, Lord. Just pray. We teach us to pray, Father. We just thank you, Lord. Teach us to pray, and thank you, Lord. Anybody else need prayer? Mm -hmm. For my dad. Okay. Lord, we just pray for yes. My dad. Mm. That, that heart valve being replaced, Lord, we just pray that mm. um, yes, God. will go excellent. And um, no complications, Lord. We're just asking that he have, I know he's got the best cardiothoracic surgeon there, Lord, Dr. Antaki. He's just mm. having his hands and the best Yes, Lord. Lord. Just give him such peace. I pray he's talking to you, Lord. Mm-hmm. Give him this incredible peace that yes, God. He knows is from you. Thank you, Lord. Just thank you. Mm -hmm. Just pray for the people who are not here, for John Boise and Cece and uh, Kim Hicks, Father, and others, God. People who have come before God, like Scotty and other people, Lord. We just pray that hearts would be touched, that this neighborhood, people would see that sign when they drive by and want to be, know what it's about, maybe be drawn. And I just thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, any other? So I would... <laughs> I keep hearing myself. <laughs> I, I think maybe you, there'd be some value in going back to the very thing you started with. Which is? Those two Greek words. Okay. You, you want to go back to that again? You kind of threw, threw people in the deep end. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Why did you go, why are those two words important and, and where did they come from? Okay, did, yeah, I probably lost everybody on that, right? Okay. I, mean, I knew what you were talking I about. Think but there are pages you can feel it. Yeah. 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 Yes. Go back, go back to that oh, I think I erased it. Oh, yeah. yeah, I erased it. I don't know. There's a way to erase the whole thing, but I'm afraid to touch anything on here. So see the little arrows on the Oh, here we go. Chuck, see yeah. the side of the arrows? Can what? You touch the arrow? Well, I just erased it. Yeah. It'll probably blow up. Oh. Yeah. We do that. So we want to be careful here. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so here's here's the first word. So really, like the point was, is like there's just one letter difference that. Right. That would make all the difference. Like it's just like every. Right. One letter would change that to subjunctive from indicative. The subjunctive, which but, would be but, translated, let us have peace, which wouldn't be the peace of God. It would be peace with God at that point. Right. That's but, the point. But the point, too, is that there's a lot of manuscripts that would have the Omicron in it. And that's why a lot of modern translations would translate it, let us have peace. And so... Uh, well, you, it should be translated, we have oh, peace, if, if, it, if it has the Omicron. It's, it's we, we have. It's indicative. If it's, if it's this way, which it's not this way. But there are a lot of manuscripts where, where the Omicron is there. Well, this is an Omega. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. 
This this is the Omicron. This right here. This is an omega. Okay. So this would be probably said this would be this word would be X Amen. This would be X Omen. One is a long O, one is a short O. My my version says kind of mixes both says, let us grasp the fact that we have peace. Oh. Uh, which version is yours? Amplified. Oh, okay. Well, that would make sense because it's grasp the fact. Right, it's a fact. See, this this is fact. And this is pronounced according to this echo. Right. Well, this right here, echo. This is the first. This is the first person. Okay. No. This would be I have. This would be spelled this way. Echo. Right. Well, see, you usually like you wouldn't like if you said this word. If you're going to memorize the word. Right. In other words, like this is we. This part. This any part is we. Right here. This any part. This means I. Right here. Okay. And this I think Spanish is like this too. Right. These words are. You mean same word meaning? In other words, then the word is either I, we, you, they, is in is it is in the word, right? In the verb. In the verb. Well, yeah, in the verb. I would agree with that. Yeah, but in English it's not, but in Greek it is. So this word, but this this is what's in the original right here. Echo men. There was only a couple of them that I saw that said, "Let us have peace." Most of them say this: "We have peace." Like that, but the point that was made it was we we're making here is that is that it was just one letter difference could have changed that whole verse right there. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's the point. We have. So we're getting like really, really technical here. Maybe a little bit too much. No, it's good. <laughs> You've got all kinds of guys here that just—that's the way pastor used to preach. Yeah. They would, he would preach, and, you know, it, things yeah. would go right over our heads, but the spirit of it right. got put in our hearts Right. Somehow. But you get it, though. You get what we're talking about. Right. Stephanie gets it. You yeah. People get it, what we're saying here. Yeah. And yeah. just the whole let us have versus we have. You know, let us have, it sounds almost like ecclesiastical or something. Right. Like, let us have, right. but we have it. Yeah. The point is that we do have it. Yeah. yeah. We do have peace. Yeah. We have it. We have it. It's a fact. It's a fact. it's a fact. Right. And maybe, I don't know, because you kind of went through verse 3, but not really. Maybe we'll be turning in. Can, when, next week. To we, verse 3? We're going to be no. Yeah. You, verse 2. Is there a little bit on the stand in grace? Oh, that? yeah. Okay, so stand in grace. So we are saved by grace, sure. Ephesians 2.89. We are taught by grace, Titus 2.11. Uh, we grow in grace. That's why I forgot that one. Second Peter three eighteen. Mm -hmm. We grow in grace. But I like the stand because you're like you cannot get out of it. Right. Yeah. That's Which what I thought. Isn't was... that the one right. that, like Pastor Stevens used to say? It's like you're in a field, and no matter where you look, yeah, you're in. You're in it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, you're in grace. We stand in grace. That's that's. I mean, like you stand it. In other words, like you can't get out of it. Like the grace isn't going to run out. One day, right. you know, it's like God, we, we can come, we have access to this grace, which means we continue to receive grace. Like it was just the beginning getting saved. It was just, we, we got, we got saved by grace through faith. It's not of ourselves. So there was kind of, there's kind of this progression here, right? We were saved by grace. Then we are taught by grace in Titus 2.11. Then we grow in grace. But of course, actually we stand in grace. That should be the next one, right? We, we are saved by grace, we stand in grace, we're taught by grace, we grow in grace. So this, this, is, the, this, is, the, this is the progression. So we, um, yeah, so we stand in it, and we have access to this grace, which means we can come boldly to the throne of grace to find help in time of need. But that's why you read it, Revelation 4. Sure. Well, yeah, Revelation 4 was just about just like the throne room of God. So that's like and, and, and that's... And that's where we go. Yeah, heaven, like, like in heaven, yeah. We have access to God. What did they used to 
say about therefore? Yeah. Um, what was it this that? When you see a therefore, you better find out what it's there for. There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good one, yeah. Said so that word stand is is a gnomic perfect active indicative. Yeah. Gnomic, it's gnomic, perfect tense. Gnomic yeah. means timeless, though. Okay. It's timeless. So yeah. It's always going to be. There. Right, and that's good too because I forgot to I forgot to bring up that I did not the gnomic part, but that it was perfect tense, right. which goes along to what you're saying. The, the word is um, the Greek word is histomy. It means to stand. So yeah, it's in the perfect tense. So it means it's permanent. It speaks of the permanency of it that we permanently stand yeah. in this grace. Yeah. Doctor Stevens said it was gnomic perfect active. Okay. I have to look up the gnomic. I don't understand. I don't know about gnomic. Gnomic just means timeless. Yeah. It, it's, there's no ending or no, it's just a timeless. Yeah. Thing. Okay. Okay. Push that little button there that says like a page turner up there. See what that does. Right here. There's this title on the other side. Oh, oh that's it. Oh, I know, it's going to blow up. One of these buttons is one of these buttons is a blow up. Yeah, so you can go to this one. There, 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 there. That's what I was Over by the no above that. So now I can go to this one. Because you erased it. Well, I erased it. It's not there. But yeah, see, so we're learning here. Maybe if you hit the back arrow, it might it might bring it back. If you hit the back, yeah, tap on that. Tap it again. We all want to know now. Tap it again. No, I guess not. Oh look, no, this is erasing it. Oh wait. No. Oh, oh, that changed the color. I know you should save that chunk, you know, so you can refer back to it. Oh, yeah. Last year's was on there. I think, yeah, but I erased it. No, but I'm saying you must have saved it last year. I guess it was saved on here. So, anyway. Cool. Cool. So, all right, good. <laughs> that way you can pre. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. We learned something here. Really? <laughs> really? What did we learn? No, no, I mean, not, not yeah, about, like, yes, we, we learned for you, not, not that. Right. Like, right. We learned a little bit about Greek, but anyway. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm learning Spanish. Yeah, they didn't do that for me. I was like, um... I like how the Amplified got them both in. You got let us and, and grasp the facts. Yeah. Like well, I mean, like the way they said it, let us grasp the facts. Yeah. And that's true. Let us grasp a hold of the facts. We have peace with God. Yeah. And that is what we call good news. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What is it? What's the note? It's another version. Like oh, is it? So it has notes in it then, huh? Oh, it's like study notes in it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I mean, those are good. I mean, I like uh, Bible Hub. You ever look at the Bible Hub? Yeah, Bible Hub's got a lot of good stuff. And then I just have, I also have the um, complete biblical library. Have you seen that before? I have, I have. Oh, you have it? Oh, you have the Old Testament and New Testament? Right. Oh, okay. Because you can't get that. I mean, well, you can if you want to pay a lot of money. Yeah. But you have the books. Oh, you have it in there? Oh, okay. No, I don't. Oh, okay. I'm confused now about... I just have the New Testament. teaching about the contrast. If you, if you put into your... Uh, in your software, what books you have in in um, in hard copies? Yeah. When you do searches, it will tell you what is in your hard copy line and give, oh. give you the exact page. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. I don't have that. I just have like books. I have internet. 
It's something I didn't have back in the day. You didn't have internet. So. Um, yeah. It's expensive. Uh, yeah. Well, I appreciate the thought. What, what is the contrast again there? Because now I'm, I'm in the weeds a little bit talking here. But About the two words? Yeah, let, what was it? Let us, no, yeah, yeah. in English. Okay, well, okay, echo men is with the omega is subjunctive. So subjunctive mood is uncertainty. No, no, I'm talking about what's, how it's written in English that sets people off the wrong way. No, it's the the oh, oh, you mean like the, the translations? It's not, it's not, it's not declarative. I used to be the same language. Yeah. It makes, it makes it, I took showers at a young age. It takes it from it being a positional. Powered by the whole right. Into, so what is an example? Well, in other words, if it says let us have peace, then it would be the, the peace of God. Then maybe we're not peace with God. You know, it would, it would be the peace of God. So let us have peace. In other words, like it's it's uncertain if I have peace or not. But here it's a fact. So the they're opposite of each other. Indicative mood and subjective are they they are they are complete opposites of each other. So if it was written in the subjunctive mood, which is not certainly in the indicative mood, if it was written in the subjunctive mood, you would have to translate "Let us have peace." This verse in the. In the in the Amplified, it seems to say, <laughs> after it says, let us grasp the fact that we have peace with God, then it says, and the joy of reconciliation with Him. That's how it talks. Then it talks about peace, with, uh, peace of God. Yeah. So it looks like, here it looks like it talks, it says peace, it's talking about peace with God, and then right afterwards. Right. The joy of reconciliation and the peace of God. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at the context there, because if you look at, at verses 6, 7, 8, like 6 through 10, you know, that that's we were, while we were sinners, while we were enemies, while we were ungodly, uh, we were saved by wrath, it says. But we were saved from wrath, brother. Uh, so the context brings out that we have peace with God. Because we were saved from wrath, we were saved from, you know, we were, while we were sinners, while we were enemies with him, you know, and we were no, we're no longer his enemy. But we were. Yeah, enemies. But we, but, but, but we were the enemies of God. Before we were, we were by nature the children of wrath. I've heard once that that verse in James that he's militarily opposed to the proud. Yeah. That's a military term. And it also says in James that whosoever loves the world is uh, is 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 an enemy of God. You know, whosoever loves the world. What's that? Yeah, because it, because it's against God. And so, like, as being his friend now. Okay, we'll see you. You're going to qualify that with saying it's okay to watch a football game, right? <laughs> I wasn't exactly going to say that, but yeah, it's okay to watch a football game. It all depends on who you're watching, though. <laughs> yeah, who you room for. Only when the patient of my wife, even God wants to stop him. Mm -hmm. It's all great. It's all uh, grace, brother. <laughs> all right, adios. Apriendo espanol. <laughs> that sounded good. That sounded like a real word. Apriendo. Apriendo. You have to say it in the passive present tip. Oh, yeah. I got to find out. Well, no, that's the, that's the first person, Apriendo. So, but I don't know what if it's active voice or whatever, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Estoy bien. You gotta learn, uh, soy, soy. Yeah, soy is I am. Siervo. Siervo? So what's siervo? Siervo is a servant. Oh, okay. 
But that would be permanent, right? I uh, yo soy. Whereas a soy is temporary. And there's duck right. sauce. Is that right? Is that the difference between soy and a soy? <laughs> the soy and there's duck sauce. Yeah. There's there was duck. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> I wasn't thinking that. Yo soy un siervo. What's that? Del? Del Senor. What's Del? Off. Off. The Lord. El Senor. Oh, okay. Oh, of. It's of. It's not day. Of. Okay. Come yes. Let's get some words to say to well, I mean that's good. Yeah, I got a couple of apps. I have. There's got a couple of apps. I have. Um, I have to, you know, I have to show them to you. They're pretty good apps. The thing is, though, if you don't like converse with people, it's kind of like it's not applied. Kind of like doctrine, right? It's like it has to be applied. So. Your number 200. Oh, yeah. But I just learned a story in soy. In seer to be. I have it. I have that one. I have Babel, yeah. I have Babel and I have uh, Duolingo. But I, but, but I think that Babel is better. Then do a lingo if you want it because it teaches you like those things like that and you learn. What is it that we Christians can't think of stuff like that? What's that? Babel. <laughs> Babel. Yeah, like, where did they get, where does that come from? It must be the Tower of Babel, right? <laughs> it's it's got to come from the Tower of Babel. They named it Babel. Yeah. yeah. So if you're babbling, yeah. blah, 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 it means like, we don't, I don't understand the words you're saying. I wonder, you know, I wonder if that person that, that came up with that, with that. I think I think it came. Oh, I'm sure it did. Oh, I don't know if he's a Christian or not. Yeah, but that. But I did some research, and Babel was one of the best ones. Yeah. So I did. I do have Babel. Um, I gotta look for a word in the Bible that I can come up with and make a business out of it. A what? What kind of business? What? Babel, you know, Babel, you know, teach somebody how to speak Spanish <laughs> or yeah. any language. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I'm saying, yo, know, Babel, uh, uh, what other, there's got to be business out there. Well, in Ghana, in Ghana, when I was there, every cab driver that we... Let me make sure this is off here. <laughs> I think we might still be on. I, yeah. I don't know. Hopefully it is. Every cab driver that we that we summon. So what's happening? Was it another thing that's happening? No, nope, 